We all have a decent sense about forces. If you push your fingers, you can tell the difference between a little force and a big force. Forces push or pull, and it's something that you can feel. But if we really want to describe motion and understand motion, we obviously have to get some kind of a quantitative measure of forces. So how are we going to do that? How do we measure the difference between a little push and a big push? Well, we need devices. And the most simple device I can think of would be something like this ordinary scale. It's spring-loaded. And when I pull on the bottom, when I apply a force to it, the needle moves. And if I apply a small force, the needle moves a little. And if I apply a larger force, this hurts a little, I see a larger range of motion. The needle points to a larger uh, angle. And so somehow we seem to have a device which is capable of measuring force. So for instance, supposing I say, OK, this is zero force. And now I would like to know how much force is applied by this little object. I can feel it. It's a fairly small force. And when I apply it to the scale, the spring in the back stretches a little bit. The needle moves. And we can draw another tick mark. This tick mark is a quantitative measure of the amount of force that we've added. Now, if this is a useful and good device, then when I add the same amount of force again, when I double the force, the needle should move twice as far. And it works pretty well. So now you can see we can calibrate this thing. I could just go on and on, adding more and more tick marks. And now I have a force meter. And I can use this force meter to measure other forces. I can now calibrate myself. I can take something which applies a very large force and measure it quantitatively. So if I had tick marks, I could tell you how much force is being applied. You can have much more sophisticated devices than this. But the idea is there. Now we can quantitatively measure force. And so remember the big question. What does force do when you apply it to an object? Now we have a way of measuring force. And uh, so here's an object. I'm going to apply a force to it and ask what happens. Well, I'm pushing. Nothing's happening. That's because there's lots of forces, not just my force. Here, the most important other force is friction. A lot of friction of this object on the table. So if I want to make measurements and decide how objects respond to forces, I would really like to isolate the problem. Let's apply one force. And since friction is kind of difficult one to explain, let's eliminate friction. So here's a lovely little device. It's called an air track. An air track is just like an air hockey table. When I turn it on, it makes lots of noise, and air comes blowing out of these little pinholes. So this cart, which right now feels lots of friction, will be sitting, instead of steel on steel, will have steel on air. And that's very low friction. If I just turn it on, and it's nice and level, then there should be no horizontal forces at all. The air doesn't apply a force. It's just making the friction small. Gravity is present, but it's straight down. And the motion is restricted to be horizontal. So when I turn it on, we should observe an object which is effectively feeling no net force. Newton's first law tells us what should happen. An object at rest should remain at rest. An object in motion should remain with the same constant motion. So let's try. An object at rest remains at rest. Mm, starts to move a little bit. Must be not quite perfectly level. But basically, Newton's first law is obeyed. Object in motion remains in motion. If you watch the tick marks carefully, you'll see that it really is constant motion. Constant motion means each second it travels the same distance. It's always going the same number of meters per second, constant velocity. If this thing was 1,000 meters long and I give it a little tick, once it's free, once it feels no forces, it's just going to continue along in a straight line, constant speed forever. So that's a, a nice sort of demonstration of Newton's first law. But what we're after now is how does it respond to force? I could apply a force by pushing it, but I'm not all that well calibrated. Let me try to get a more uniform, in particular, a constant force. Simple idea. Let me take a string, and I'll hang some weights, some paper clips. Alan is going to take the string and put it over a little pulley. And if the pulley is low friction, then what we should have is a simple device to apply a constant force in this direction. It'll be the only force. So what's going to happen when you apply one force to this object. 
starts at rest, speeds up, faster, faster. Let me, uh, let me send it in moving to the right and watch what happens. Slows down, stops, turns around, goes faster and faster. How do we describe that motion? Well, it's familiar motion. If you measure exactly where it is as a function of time, you can deduce quantitatively that it's constant acceleration. It started at rest, and then it was moving slowly and then faster and faster. The velocity was steadily increasing, constant acceleration. When it was coming in from the right, velocity slowed down, stopped, constant acceleration.